Hey everybody, I'm Michael from Michael Strong Rubber Stamps. Well, we're coming into autumn. The leaves are starting to turn. There's a little nip in the air and the clouds are rolling in. Well, you know what they say about clouds having a silver lining? Our project today has its very own silver lining. So come on back and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here's our project today. It's a card. It's kind of silver and very, I think it's kind of classy looking. I hope you like it too. And uh, I've decorated the outside with my cloisonne frame stamp and you can see that here. Now um, the inside of this card also has a little action going on but I don't want to share that with you quite yet. So what you're going to need are two pieces of cardstock and these are cut so that they are five by six and a half inches. You're gonna need two pieces, one for the outside, one for the inside. This is the Cloisonne frame stamp from Michael Strong Rubber Stamps. So I've stamped it on this kind of a, a metallic um, gunmetal gray. It's really a pretty color. So uh, I made a little frame out of that and I backed it with a little contrasting card stock. It's a little bit paler color. And you can see how that's going to fit right on the front of the card. And this is my Cloisonne vase stamp, and you can see that it's a pretty big stamp. And we're going to stamp it so that we have a nice arrangement in the middle of here. So let's pull that out, and I'm going to ink this up, and then emboss in silver. Just sprinkle that right on. This is the metallic silver embossing powder from Judikins. I think they have like 50 different colors. You've seen this a million times, I know, but it's always impressive to me. So let's go ahead and heat that. It doesn't really matter that there's some little pieces here that are clinging to the edge because we're gonna be cutting this out anyway. All right. Now, if you remember, I have a similar stamp to this and it's the Cloisonne pot. Well, this is kind of like the companion piece to the Cloisonne pot. It can be cut up into lots of different ways. And I made this little cheat sheet here just to show you all the different things you could get from one stamp. Now today, we're just going to be using this little section right here. And I've stamped it and embossed it. And here's how it looks. And you can see it's the same thing, but a different color palette. So one more thing we're going to do is a little color treatment on here. And we're going to use a little uh, sort of a gray ink. Now what this is going to do is give us a little more dimension to the object. So what I'm going to do is just stipple on some ink to it. Now sometimes the stipple brushes, the, the, the brush part splays out um, a little too much. And so um, here's a little tip, tip of the day for you. Just take a rubber band and um, if you put the rubber band on the bristles, that it helps you concentrate the color a little bit more. You can see how you can really get a nice contrast now. All right, well, the other little trick that I like to do is masking. And I wanna put a little bit more color just on the base of that. So let's cover up the top and add a little color down here. And what that's going to do, of course, is to leave intact the way that I have done the top and then added this little extra color at the bottom. Now, this is going to be attached to the front of the card. And I, I'm gonna bring the card back in and you'll see how that really complements the frame that we put on here. Now, I have one with a little um, adhesive on the back. Let's go ahead and put that adhesive on. This is uh, some of that really good trio adhesive from Judikins. All right, so let's turn this over and we'll add some stems. And you remember from the Divide and Conquer episode where I just cut up cardstock to make little stems and we're doing the exact same thing here. I'm just gonna add a few little pieces here and we'll be able to trim them up a little bit later if we need to. So once they're in place, we're just gonna turn that over and add it right to the front of the card. All right, so here is our stems. This is kind of an arrangement that needs a little help, don't you think? So what I'm going to do is come over here to my Clip It Up and I have a lot of flowers and other supplies that I've already taken care of. And, and um, what I like about this is uh, it doesn't take up too much space on my desk because my desk is a mess at home. And this gives me lots of opportunity to put things that I need close by, but without taking up too much room. So I really, really like it. So I've made some flowers 
here. And you can see that they are um, kind of a sunburst, kind of a punch. And I layered a couple of them together. And then uh, there's a smaller version too that I layered on top. I think it kind of looks like um, a chrysanthemum. So um, what, what I did was just arrange them kind of here and there all over. And if you remember from the, um, the one that we showed you in the beginning, this is how it looks. All right, so basically we're done with the outside of the card. So let's move on to the inside of the card. So inside the card is this clever little shadow box, as you can see. And um, lo and behold, what do we find? Our silver lining. <laughs> That's this frame piece that frames the little picture of my brand new daughter-in-law, Carrie. So I want to show you how we're going to do that. So here's our inside piece, and I'm just going to kind of walk you through and tell you what I've done to the inside. So I've made a little fold on the end. It's a little half inch fold here, and there's another little half inch fold here. And I've added some trio double-sided adhesive to there and there. And then one more little piece along this edge. And of course, all this will be in the design guide, so you don't have to remember it right this minute. Just um, check the design guide and you'll get all the steps that you need. So I'm gonna turn this over and you can see that I've started to cut a little hole in here. So to make this little window, I used the inside frame from the Cloisonnet frame stamp that we retained earlier. So it what goes right over there, I just used a little pencil to make a whole line. And now we're gonna complete the little window here. Just take a nice straight edge and a craft knife. There we go. All right, so we're gonna attach the frame right over the little window. Okay, let's push our frame into place. And now we can bring in um, our silver lining. So here it is. It's the outside frame, only this time done on the shiny metal paper. Okay, so there is our silver lining. So now let's add this inside piece to the outside card. And here's the one that we made before. And these, um, these little tabs are going to be attached on either side of the center fold. So what I'm going to do is line it up. That little tab is right next to the center fold line. All right, just adhere that down. And then just fold it flat and close the card on top of it. Now what's gonna happen when we open this up, it makes kind of a pup tent kind of a deal. And we need to make sure that this part is attached to the back of the card. So here's that other piece of tape. Let's peel that off. Now this is an important part of the project because it's, um, uh, it's, it's the thing that makes the shadow box work. So take the palm of your hand and press it down slowly. And as you press, it's going to create another fold at the end down here. And we're just gonna kind of take a bone folder and flatten it out. So the palm of your hand part is really important to remember. And now you can see how that mechanism really works great. Okay, the only thing left to do is fill up the frame with something. So I'm going to use this picture of my new daughter-in-law, Carrie, and I've put a little um, adhesive on the back of this too. So it's a little tricky to get this positioned in the window just right. So I just use a sticky note uh, and I'm gonna attach it right to the top of the picture here. And this is my little sticky note handle. And then you can just slide it in Make sure you have it positioned just the where you want it. And then I'm going to press it down into place and pull the note out. And as you see, it's perfectly positioned inside the card. Okay, um, I'd like to show you a couple of variations on the same card. So here's the finished card. You can tell I added a couple of little smaller flowers to that one that we did earlier. Now, um, this one I left the, um, the base intact, just did a little pencil treatment to it and an interesting painted background and added a little ribbon trim. So this is the, um, a card using that same rectangular frame. I just cut it up to show that you can make it into a square frame as well. So um, I think that looks kind of cool that way. And then of course if you want to do Christmas you can change the color palette and make a really interesting combination of uh, green and red. And uh, on this one, instead of using the inner frame that I did before, I stamped it twice, used the big frame on the outside, and then used the big frame again on the inside if you have a larger picture that you want to kind of frame. 
All right, and then the last thing I wanted to show you is how I did this one. And this one is kind of a fall looking card with some really interesting leaves that I punched out. Now, um, there's our famous cat Stella sitting inside the box. But uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about making these leaves. I just take some orange color card stock. Now, um, at home, I'd be using bleach and I'd have some gloves on. But this is just water. I just want to kind of demonstrate for you what, what the action is. So you have paper towels soaked in bleach and you just throw them onto the paper like this. And the bleach lands very randomly all over the paper as you can see on the other side, which has been bleached, really cool, interesting patterns. And what I did here was added some ink. So this is just dye ink in red, brown, yellow, and orange. And then when you punch them out, you get this instant fall color on each of the leaves, and every single one is different, just like in nature. Okay. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you like the project well enough to do it at home. So I'll see you next time. Oh, by the way, if a cloud rolls into your neighborhood, I hope it has a silver lining. See you later. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.